Good morning, Bowser. Thank you for saying goodbye. Hello, backyard deer. She was just running through the backyard and then spotted me and said, what is that weird looking thing? Good morning, dear. Okay, we're leaving Regina's house. Bye, Regina. Hi, Regina. Thank you for everything. We just had breakfast and believe it or not, we were so quiet, I don't think you woke up. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's get in the motor room. We're still in Ohio. I left Regina's house, I don't know, a couple hours ago. I just wanted to show you guys my uh, navigator. Good thing Dad has a lead deposit in his nose and he knows which way is north. And my navigator is literally sleeping on the job. And I have my GPS. Look at how cute this kid is. Okay, Miss Bailey. So we're in a pretty nice rest stop in Northern Ohio. Ohio, with their new uh, slogan. Find it here. But uh, they have this pretty cool map. So when we came from Mark a couple days ago, we were here on the 70, 70, 70. 70 all the way and then I believe Regina is kind of near Whitehall and that was where we were the past couple days now this morning we went up the 270 and I believe the 71 or the 23 one of these two we came up I think it was a tw this one because then we cut across into Delaware and then we took the 23 up 23 all the way and then we came into Finley and then now we are on the 75 I don't know where exactly somewhere in this area I don't know exactly but we're gonna come into Toledo and then go up into Detroit is like right up here it's pretty close so that's our path today was from Columbus up, up through Finley, through Bowling Green, through Toledo, Ohio, and into Detroit. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool map here. Half a mile. Keep right to stay on I-75 North. Look at all the damn tires on this trailer, Coop. What do you think about that? That is hot. Holy shit! That is a lot of dang tires. When these two say they don't like each other. Keep going, Koopy. Oh, I caught you guys loving on each other. Oh, baloney. Oh, I love you, brother. Okay, we can't pull over again. So we have visit or a welcome to Pure Michigan. Welcome to Michigan. Nice. <laughs> it's okay to have fun together. I've just proven to the world that you don't actually hate your brothers. No, that's not nice, no. Good 
Cooper, here's another one, dude. Look at all these tires. That's a lot. They must have some kind of a law for like weight distribution to help save the roads from not getting beat up to you know take it easier on the roadway. But that's a lot of dang tires, dude. And we've seen flatbed trailers, other trailers with just as many, if not more. Like literally as many tires you can jam under a trailer. We've seen it on the other side. It's crazy. We're at the Henry Ford Museum. It's a giant building. I don't know what it used to be, but it's a giant waste of space now, but it sure is beautiful. Okay, so we're in front of a presidential limo. Bailey, whose limo was this? John F. Kennedy. Yes, John F. Kennedy. So, Jameson, what is the historical significance of this particular car? It was the car that he got assassinated in. Yes, John F. Kennedy. This is the actual car. It was a convertible when he used it, and then after he got assassinated, they had it... I would have thought they would scrap it or put it in a museum, but they used it for four more presidents, and they modified it. They put a roof on it and all kinds of stuff. But this, if you look in here, is the literally the seat right here that he was sitting when he got shot, and this is where Jacqueline was sitting. So kind of creepy spooky when you think about it like that. And it's just weird that they used it for four more presidents. Can't really see with the reflection. But then they put the top on and they have a, they said Nixon had this hatch put in. You can kind of see where it'll open up so he could stand and wave. And they also have this bulletproof, um, bulletproof sunroof of sorts. Guess what, guys? More clocks at the Henry Ford Museum. We're getting our, our fill of clocks. This is showing the weights. The weights are the, what pull down on the drums and pulleys to keep the clock ticking. More clocks. Yep. We got our fill of clocks the other day, but we got some more here. What do you think about the size of this train, Cooper? It's huge. It's huge. And then look at this one over here, guys. We were just talking about this one. It's a reproduction, but here's the steam engine. And they had it pull like carriage cars. That's pretty cool looking. This train is gigantic though, huh? The side, Bailey, how big was it, you said? 76 feet. 76 feet long. Big. Okay, so this car is pretty cool. We are on a cross-country trip from Los Angeles to Pennsylvania and back. This car, back in 1903, two dudes took this car from San Francisco all the way to New York. It took 61 days, it said and this open air, I don't even know how fast it goes, car. That's crazy talk. Look what he said, I do not. Okay, we're at the old drag strip Christmas tree. Drivers are pre-staged. Drivers, hit your ready buttons. Okay. Boom. Oh, Jameson won with a 416. Okay, let's do it again. Hit your stage ready buttons. Oh, Jameson won with a 404. I think that was our fastest one yet. All right, now Bailey gets to race Jameson. So we haven't seen it yet. Don't push the buttons, but Bailey the last two times has gotten in 0.22 seconds, so a quarter of a second reaction time. Let's see if she can hold up to the pressure. Go ahead. 
Oh, jam! Whoa, point zero five nine. That was pure luck. That's less than a tenth of a second. I just heard you go. Ding! Winner. Okay. Point zero nine four. Nice. Okay, we're standing at the zero. Actually, stand right on that line there, Cooper. There you go. All right, throw your paper airplane and see how far it goes. All right, it ended at a little over 12 feet. Jameson, go ahead. Got the circle one. Oh, that one did some loops and tricks. We're right at four feet. Bailey. Oh, dang, a little over 16 feet. And now, let's switch hands here. Dad's gonna throw his. I got a round one, too. So let's see. Go. Oh, it turned. Dad's was the shortest, shortest at and two said feet. They were the best. They are the best. You need a bigger spot. We're going all the way. Bailey, whose plane is that shoved under there that wanted to go even further? Mine. Oh, it's yours? Yeah. Nice treat. Good work. The target's up there, yeah. Oh, Actually, I didn't I even notice the target. Up. We were just going for distance. Up. Okay, so we're on the actual bus that Rosa Parks was on, and Bailey is sitting in the seat that she sat in. This is the actual bus, restored, and this was where she sat. The front third, they said, was for whites only. The middle third was mixed, whites or blacks, um, but whites had priority, and the back was for the blacks. And she'd sat here, a couple other black people she was with, got up and moved, and she refused, and the rest is history. All right, Cooper, set your airplane down. Set your airplane over here. Cooper's gonna crank this wheel and see how many light bulbs he can, he can light up. Go ahead, Coop. Oh, he got one. He's got one. He got, to, oh, he got two, almost three. Two, almost three. All right, give Jameson a chance. You got three. Oh, he hit like six of them. All right. Okay, and Bailey is not participating. She's over there. She's having a moment right now. We're we're uh, we're hitting the preteens here. Look at that face. She's tearing up her paper airplane that she made in anger. I guess that's a good vent for frustration. Okay. Ready? You got it to the top! That's right. You could power your generator. <sighs> Did I hit the top? Yeah. That's the power the of dad. And you could Okay, Kehos. We're filling out postcards right now. Bailey, who are you mailing yours to? Chesley. Chesley? Yep. Okay, what about you, bud? Who, have we thought about, we don't know who you're mailing it to or who was up? I'm writing it to Grandma. Grandma? All right, very cool. <laughs> Cooper's not writing one because we, we were gonna get up in the front there and start driving and I said, oh, come back, come back to the back. Let's do a little video. So we just left the Henry Ford Museum. Massive, one word, massive, huh? Yeah. Okay, so um, Dad, Dad's take, museum is pretty cool, a lot of cool shit, because it's not just airplanes, it's everything. Um, everything American. So it's an American museum, it just happens to be by Henry Ford, he collected a lot of stuff. My favorite thing was the race cars, the teardrop, like those land speed cars and stuff. That one, that long gold one had four engines in it, crazy talk. So, but my take though, it's a bit overwhelming because it's so much stuff and the way they have it laid out is not very, it doesn't flow. Like, I don't even know if we saw everything. I'm pretty sure we didn't because it's a big museum, but there weren't, it wasn't any like order and it was all like, I don't know, it didn't flow where you, you would kind of go around things and then you'd be like, whoa, what, where am I? I don't even know how I got here and go ahead. They would have like, Louder, please. 
they would have like uh, engines and then uh, guns, like an aisle of yeah. guns, and then engines on the other side. And then George Washington stuff, and then tractors, and then yeah, they had all kinds of stuff. And it was weird. It would, it wasn't like a museum with room and a thing, and it was just sections because the, the museum was so big that it was just like almost one giant room. So they had like a section of motors and a section of Indian Native American history, and then they had a section of the you know slave movement and. Anyways, so it didn't really, I don't know. I found it confusing, but we saw a lot of good stuff, though. Cooper, what do you think was your favorite thing that we saw? Out of, we saw a lot of stuff. We were here four yeah. and a half hours. Um, my favorite part was that train with, like, those brakes that, like, whoever's steering it, there's these bars, and you pull a lever, and all the bars That's hit right. the wheels. And yeah, that was the, that was the yellow little train that looked like, um, like coaches like um, carriages, like horses. Yeah. It was a train, but it looked like a bunch of little stagecoaches. And then, yeah, what he's talking about is in between the train wheels, there was a bar that would twist. And this one would hit that wheel, and this one would hit that wheel. So when you pull the lever, it would break both the tires, or both the train wheels. What about you, Bailey? My favorite one is when we saw, like, the actual, like, presidential limousine. Oh, that was pretty cool, too. Like, the it was the real one. They had the real one, and they had quite a few of them, huh? probably like, what, four or five of them from the different years. They had the the Kennedy one, and then it was, I don't know who the presidents were before, because they used them for like 10 or 20 years, so it was all the way from like the 70s down to the, like they had a presidential coach. It was like a wagon. Yeah, what about you, that bud? That was for Theodore Roosevelt, the wagon. Yeah, Teddy Roosevelt, huh? Okay. What about you? My favorite is another train, but it was like a humongous black one with like a giant steam tank and you could yeah. go inside and look at all the twisty knobs yeah. and there was only like a window like that big that you could see. Yeah, huh, from where the conductor sat, you didn't really yeah. see too much. Yeah. But luckily a train that big, you don't care what's in front of you, you're running it over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was a massive train. Yeah. That was a massive train. Okay, so all around, you guys enjoyed the museum? Yep. yep. Yeah. So, okay, so we're leaving Dearborn, Michigan, which is a suburb southwest of Detroit. And now we're going to head to the ferry. I forget. I think it's in Ludington, Michigan. I forget exactly, but it's about a five-hour drive. So Dad's got to get started because it's right about a little bit before 5 o'clock right now. So five-hour drive plus 5 o'clock means what time? 10 o'clock, not including gas breaks, potty breaks, food. I gotta make dinner at some point. So it's, we're gonna get there probably 11 or midnight. And then we're gonna sleep, and then we're going to wake up and get on the ferry. But we'll do another video probably later on tonight. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, <laughs> I started a video on accident. Here it comes. We're in Detroit. Look what street it is coming. Eight mile road. We love you, Eminem. <laughs> All right, we're hitting our first real traffic of the whole trip, actually. But that's what you get for driving through any major city at five in the afternoon. It's 520 right now, actually. But uh, so to be expected, but this is the first time we've really, and thankfully it's not even bumper to bumper, but Detroit, five o'clock, definitely traffic. Okay, we're at a rest stop, and there's a truck here with one of those. Now, it doesn't have all the tires we've seen, but still, it's got the regular, the couple duels in the back, and then it's got these big super singles that have the big airbags to go up and down for they can lift them and lower them. But I don't get, when they're all down like this, how does it turn? Maybe for low speed turning, they lift up and then they put them back down, but it's gotta be really hard to turn with all four of these tires down. I don't know, what do you think, kids? We've seen some trailers with a lot of tires. Yeah, and we saw some on the other side. One was like an asphalt trailer, and they seem to be like gravel trailers. They literally have 
10 to 12 axles of dual tires. It's crazy talk. I don't know how that works. Oh, and a few minutes ago on the other side of the freeway, what did we see that was super cool at oh, the other truck stop? The, wind, the windmill things? Yeah, the wind, the wind turbine blades for like a big windmill, a power generator. Um, but they were on the other side of the freeway, so we didn't stop at another rest stop. But they were huge. They were, I don't know how big, like 100 feet, double, yeah, two semi-trailers. Yeah. Super long. But they were pretty cool, but we didn't stop there because it was on the other side of the direction. Okay, here's the Michigan Mitten. There's the whole state. Up here is part of Michigan. And then this is the Mitten. You can see it looks like a Mitten. Anyways, so we came up through Toledo. Oh, where's it at? Toledo, Ohio. Came up into Dearborn. Right there. This is Detroit proper. We are in a suburb of Dearborn. That's where the museum was. And then we took some kind of a ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy to this 96 here. To, we're in Lansing right now at a rest stop. You are here. And then after Lansing, we are going to drive to Grand Rapids. And then after Grand Rapids, we're staying on the 96. And we're coming up here, coming up here. This dotted line is an auto ferry for cars. I was going to go on that originally, but they don't take motorhomes. So then we stay on this road, go up, 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 up to Luddington. Luddington. And you see this dotted line, dot, 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 dot. That's the ferry we're going to take. That's the freight ferry. Semi trucks, motorhomes, big things. So we're going to go up there tonight to Luddington. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to take the ferry from Luddington to Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And then we're going to go somewhere over here is Oshkosh, Wisconsin. That's our plan for today, though. We're driving across the mitten. From here to you are here right now to Grand Rapids up to Ludington. Okay, I literally pulled into this rest stop in hopes that I would come across a truck of some sort of this type. And I found one. So seriously. I know I've been obsessed today, but this is ridiculous. How does this truck turn without ripping all the tires off? We got, where's my finger? There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sets of duels. Now obviously some of them aren't down, but you have one, two, three, four sets that are down. That's two, four, six, eight tires, 16 tires. I don't know. I don't know why I'm obsessing, obsessing about this, but this is crazy talk. That's a lot of damn tires. Okay, it's a little after 10 p.m. Michigan time. Um, worked out about right. We left the museum, the Henry Ford Museum, at about five, a little before, and we got here in five hours. So this is the ferry at night it's sprinkling on us right now which is pretty nice it's kind of cool it's gonna be a nice cool night for us and here are the kids um, hard to see them but they're there so kids that was a long drive huh yeah. so this will be our, our good night video but um, so we woke up this morning from Regina's house we got on the road at 7 we drove for four hours ish got to the museum at a little after 11 had lunch so about noon we got to the museum, left at about five. So four hours of driving, five hours at the museum, and then another five hours of driving. It's been a long day. Yeah, so, but it was a cool day though. We saw some good stuff at the museum and uh, saw some cool stuff driving. And um, yeah, so here we are at the boat, we're parked. Um, tomorrow morning we gotta get up early and go to the ticket office and figure out where we need to park the motorhome because they load it into here you can see the open they drive it in and then we go up I don't know if you can see but right now but it's the, everything's on there's steam or smoke coming out this ship I was watching a video on it it's steam powered like a giant old-school train so we'll learn more about it tomorrow but for now we're gonna go brush our teeth Get ready for bed. Oh, the kids are catching raindrops. Cooper's Cooper's not trying to catch flies right now. They're catching raindrops. 
Um, so, all right, guys. Good night, world. Good night, mom, nani, grandpa, grandma, auntie, everybody. Mark, Carol, uh, who else we got? Regina, their brother, uh, Mark's brother, Nate. Grandma. Yeah, we said grandma. I don't know. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Everybody we've met. Everybody we've uh, been watching. This guy's from work. Everybody. So, we're going to go to bed.